Hi, welcome to my channel, where I share my knowledge on programming the DJI Teledrones with Python. Today, we're going to get into the second video of our Tkinter controller GUI series, and we're going to look at adding a video stream from our computer's webcam to our GUI. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to break our task of adding the video stream into five steps as pertains to our previous module. These steps include first, importing OpenCV and classes from the Pillow library for displaying the video stream with Tkinter. Past this, we'll initialize a video capture object to receive frames from our webcam by specifying it with channel zero. Then we'll define a method for capturing frames from our webcam and displaying them in our label object. After this, we'll call the classes video stream method to run in the Tkinter main loop. And finally, we'll release our video capture object. Here we are in the module we worked on in the previous video. The only difference with this is that I've added the steps that we previously defined. So here we have step zero, we're gonna specify our imports, and then we'll move in to our drone controller's definition, and we'll initialize a video capture object to be a part of this object. After this, we're gonna work on our method down here. We're gonna find a class method for capturing our video frames and displaying them. After we do this, we'll have to call this video stream method we just created in our main loop of the tkinter. After we do this, we're going to go down to our cleanup and ensure that we release the video capture object to properly clean up all resources. Okay, we're ready to make our imports. Now, previously, we only imported from tkinter the tk label and button objects. Next, we're going to import OpenCV as CV2 to receive our frames from our computer's webcam. We're also going to be importing from the PIL library or the pillow library, we're gonna import image and image TK objects. The purpose of these pertains to how we're gonna display the image with tkinter in a way that is compatible between it and OpenCV. So let's get into that next. Now it's time to explain our imports. So when we import the image and image TK objects from the pillow library, we're specifically leveraging these classes for two important tasks in our tkinter method. We're gonna use one the image object for image conversion. And then two, the image TK object we're going to use to create a tkinter compatible photo image. For the task of image conversion, we're going to use the image object from PIL to handle conversions of the current frame obtained from OpenCV. Now see, the CV2 image that we received from OpenCV, this is a NumPy array representing an image in the BGR color space. So we will use the image objects from array method to which is used to convert this NumPy array into a PIL image object. This will allow us to manipulate and process the image using the pillow library. So once we have the PIL image, we need to convert it into a format that tkinter understands. This is where image TK from PIL comes into play. It allows us to create a photo image object that tkinter can directly handle and display. So in summary, the image class from the pillow library is used for initial image processing while the image TK class is used to create a photo image object that is in a format that can be seamlessly integrated into our tkinter GUI. This dual step process is crucial in ensuring that the video stream is properly displayed within the GUI window. Now we're back to our steps and we have successfully completed step zero. We've imported all the necessary uh, things we need. Now we're on to initializing a video capture object to receive frames from the webcam channel zero. So let's get into that. We've got step zero out of the way. It's time to in initialize our video capture object. We're gonna do this in the drone controller's init method so that it can be an attribute of the drone controller class. Now, we're gonna use the self keyword since this is part, it is a part of the class, and we're gonna call the capture cap. And now we're gonna get our cap using OpenCV's video capture method, which takes in an argument for the channel of the camera to receive video frames from. Now channel zero we're using for our computer's internal webcam. We'll begin frames differently with the drone, which you've seen in a previous video, but we will also have to then manipulate these frames slightly differently. But let's not worry about that today. Now we've initialized our video capture object. Time to move on to defining a method for capturing frames from our webcam and displaying them in our label object. Let's look at that now. Now it's time to add our video stream. Let's go into our class and just pass the run app method. We're going to go to step two. To find a method, 
as we just previously discussed. So first, let's define this. We're going to define this method by calling it video stream, and it only takes in the self keyword as it is a method of the drone controller class. Now, the first thing we need to do in this method is use our capture object to get frames from our webcam. We use that by defining two variables, return and frame, and we set them equal to self.cap, the video capture object we created, and we call the read method to start reading frames from the video capture object. Now, return is telling us if the last frame was read successfully. It's a Boolean variable. Frame is actually what we're going to be using now. So what are we going to do with this frame? We're going to first, like we discussed, convert the current frame to the RGB color space, which is accepted by tkinter. Uh, so OpenCV, it uses the BGR color space. If we excluded this line, our video stream method is still going to work. I tried it, but the image is going to be in the BGR color space. So it's uh, not what we're used to seeing. Let's just leave it at that. Now, after we've converted this to the RGBA color space, we're going to then convert it to a pillow image object. We're going to call this image. We're going to set it equal to the image we imported from the pillow library. And that's from array method, which takes the CV2 image. And if we can fetch this documentation here, it essentially puts it into a PIL image format so that we can further do processing with it. Okay, so now we've converted our CV2 image into a pillow image object. The next step is then to convert this into a tkinter compatible photo image by using the image TK we imported and calling the photo image method, which converts its argument, which we set equal to our pillow image, into the tkinter compatible photo image. Now with this photo image object, we have to next not do anything with it. Because next we have to pay, place the label, or we're packing it, to the center of the window. Now this might not make sense, so let's continue on. Now we're wanting to pack the label, even though we did it previously in our run app method. Because once we pack it again, we're going to set its photo equal to the photo image that we created in this line here. Now after we've set its image equal to this, we've got to configure the photo image as the displayed image using the configure method of the label. Now tkinter has a lot of methods and attributes. Uh, you, you need to know which ones to use when you need them. And by that I mean a Google search is quite helpful. So now we've packed the label, we've set it to the photo image, and then we've configured the photo image as the displayed image. After this, we have to recursively call this method after a delay of five milliseconds. Now, recursion is a more advanced computer science topic. It's similar to an infinite loop, but the difference is that when you're calling the method itself here after this delay, we just start back up the top and get the next frame again. And then we process it, and this is where we have to pack the label and configure it each time. This is so that our frames are updated properly, and what we see is a real-time video stream, where in actuality, it's just the label updated every 5 milliseconds. Now, you can skip this part if you feel like you've got a good understanding of the method already. But if not, let's just go through it one more time. So first, we converted the current frame from the BGR color space, which is commonly used in OpenCV, to the RGBA color space, which is compatible with tkinter. The resulting CV2 image is then a NumPy array, which we can process with tkinter. After this, we converted the NumPy array, CV2 image, into a pillow image object, which is the standard image format compatible with tkinter. Then with this, we converted the image object image to a tkinter compatible photo image object, image tk. And then we dealt with our tkinter updates. We packed the label to the center again. We set it equal to the photo image, which stores this image tk object as an attribute of our label for later use. After that, we configured the object as what's displayed as the image in the label. And then we did recursion, which is an advanced topic. But all we need to know is that it caused the method to repeat and grab the next or most current frame and update it in our label for us to see. Now we've accomplished our task of defining the method for 
capturing our frames and displaying them in our tkinder GUI. It's now time to move on to calling this method so that we can actually put it to use. We're going to do this in the tkinter main loop, as you'll see next. Back in PyCharm, we're now ready to call our video stream method, and we're going to do that within our run app method of the GUI class. So within the run app method, in the try block, after we pack our buttons and our label, we're going to go ahead and call this method. And since it's a class, class method, we call it first by typing the self keyword, and then we type the method name. And that's all there is to it. Now we've successfully called the class's video stream method to run with the tkinter main loop. Now we're going to release the video capture object in our cleanup method. Looking at our cleanup method, we see in our try block that we initially only had to quit the tkinter main loop, but now we have another resource we have to ensure that we properly clean up, and that's our video capture object. So to make sure that we clean this up, we're going to go ahead and call self.cap because this is an attribute of the class and to release the capture object we type cap dot release and that's all there is to it so we hit run and we should have our GUI pop up there we are it works we're streaming from our computer's webcam and our tkinter GUI Thanks for watching today's video. In the next video, we'll be adding our Tello and controlling it with keyboard presses to finish this series. If there's anything that you need help with that I didn't cover in this video, please mention it in the comments and I'd be happy to help if I can. And until next time, thank you again.